Okay, here we're going to go into a little detail about controlling CO2 levels. What we see in the image here is an actual uh, controller brain box. We see a remote sensor here. We see a power cord. All these can work in unison to help regulate CO2 levels in a uh, grow facility here. So what are the CO2 levels? Well, monitoring CO2 levels is critical to maintain an efficient grow operation no matter the size. So is, we're talking it could be a small grow tent, could be a large room, could be even a warehouse. Monitoring the CO2 levels are important. However, it's important to remember it's one thing to know the CO2 levels, but it's another thing to do something about it. So just monitoring and know the CO2 levels is one step in the right direction, but being able to correct those or maintain those at a certain level would be the next step uh, or logical progression a grower should take. So there's CO2 controllers. We see the one pictured here. Uh, quality CO2 controllers um, are directly connected to a delivery system which can, offers the greatest level of control over the CO2 levels in a grow space. So they're monitoring um, and they're adding or kicking on a system when they need to, when the CO2 levels are getting too low, and turn off when it's getting too high. These controllers are the best for maintaining levels of carbon dioxide within a certain predetermined range. Now when you want to add CO2, well, CO2 can benefit the plant through all stages of growth. So even pretty much from just beyond seedling phase all the way to the end, it is beneficial to add CO2. However, it should only be added during daylight hours because this is when the light-dependent reaction of photosynthesis is active, and this is the plant when it's consuming carbon dioxide. So as far as, uh, far as stages of plants go, the entire stage of growth, but as far as when specifically on a day-to-day -day basis, when the light when the sunlight's out or when the lights are on is the best time to be dosing carbon dioxide. Now, when we're looking at dosing, there can be timers or controllers as options. Uh, timers are by far um, less expensive, and they release carbon dioxide at consistent predetermined intervals and durations. This requires calculations and estimations of plant consumption, and a photocell is advised to ensure only daytime dosing is uh, provided. And we can see that here on this timer here, there's a photocell, meaning this will only activate um, this repeat cycle timer when it is getting exposed to light. So that's a good option to have if you're going with the timer system. However, they do tend to lead to kind of estimation and they can lead to that um, loss or wasting of CO2. What's a little bit better is controllers. They react to a given current conditions. This allows for uh, adjustments to be made to maximize efficiency and help ensure CO2 levels are being maintained. As a result, these controllers are preferred over those timers. You can see the one pictured here uh, can work with um, generators, can work with um, tank systems, um, has a lot of options that can be utilized there. But controllers are much preferred over timers. Now controllers um, have you select a max and minimum and maintain within this range. This is improvement over timers, but it can still lead to wasted CO2 by overshooting the maximum and over the course of changing conditions. So what you want to look for in a controller, what the best controllers are, are ones that have something called fuzzy logic, and it's kind of listed right here. Um, looking for controllers are definitely an advantage over timers. And the preferred controllers are ones that have this called fuzzy logic mode. And they help maintain this kind of uh, efficient levels of CO2 without over or under dosing the grow facility. I have a separate video on that if you care to learn more about the fuzzy logic.